Hello and welcome to the My Heritage webinar series. I'm Jeff Rasmussen, your host, broadcasting to you live from Middleton, Idaho. Today we have Dana Drutman, who is here at who is live at My Heritage headquarters in Tel Aviv, Israel, for her class, New Searching Experience at My Heritage. My Heritage has done some really great things with searching lately, so I'm uh, excited to learn all about it today. Also excited I'm uh, to have more than 1,600 of you from 32 countries who have registered for the live webinar. So wherever and whenever you are, glad to have you with us. And there's just a couple of days to go uh, where you can use both the MyHeritage Photo Enhancer and MyHeritage in color for free. Uh, normally these tools can be used by non-subscribers on up to 10 photos each, while users with a complete plan enjoy unlimited use. But now through September 10th, anyone can enhance and colorize as uh, many photos as they'd like for free. So watch today's webinar, then head up to MyHeritage with your digital photos. And now I'd like to introduce today's speaker, Dana Drutman. Dana is a senior product manager at MyHeritage and is responsible for MyHeritage's historical record search engine. She leads a dedicated and agile team of developers and QA engineers and works closely with UX designers and data analysis analysts to create the ultimate research experience. She joined MyHeritage in 2016 and loves every minute of it. She previously worked at Intel and served as a lieutenant in the Israel, Israeli Army. She has a bachelor's degree in industrial engineering and an MBA from Tel Aviv University. Please put together your virtual hands and let's give Dana Dretman a nice warm webinar. Welcome. Hi, Dana, and welcome to the show. Hello and good evening or morning or noon to everyone. <laughs> yeah, I'm it's... super excited um, to take a part of the, the webinars. Um, I hope you will enjoy it. Oh, um, looking forward to it. And your screen looks good, so the time's all yours. Thanks, Dana. Okay, thank you so much. And now uh, let's get started. So Jeff already introduced me, so he did a great job. I don't feel like I need to introduce myself. Um, so as he said, um, I've been at my heritage for more than four years, and I really love every minute of it. It's a very special place to work. Uh, it's just one big family. This is the way that we feel, at least, the, the, the employees at my heritage. I, I'm 33 years old, and that's my uh, little happy family. Uh, Nadav, he's the oldest one. He's two and a half years old, and Ido, the youngest one, is one year old. And Nadav is not asleep yet, although it's 9 p.m. in Israel, so I'm sorry in advance if you hear him uh, during this webinar. So I wanted to share with you a little bit um, the changes that we've been doing in the last few months in the, uh, what we used to call Super Search, but it's actually our search engine. So before we start talking about what we did, I want to remember, all of us to remember, what used to be up until just a few months ago. Actually, the same exact search form and experience was developed way back in, 12, in 2012 and hasn't changed a lot since. We did make some changes and improvements, but it stayed pretty much the same experience. So we had the form, we had uh, uh, the basic form, as you can see here. We had an option for advanced form with many additional fields. Uh, we used to have the categories on the right. And I guess that you're even more familiar with this than I am. Um, when you searched for an individual, a family member, a relative, uh, these are the results that you used to get. Um, and as I said, it's been like this for many, many years. And we know it's good, but we actually knew for sure that we can make it better. So we decided that it's time for a change. And we want to do something that will be much better for our users. And before I introduce to you the new search experience that I guess some of you had already tried it yourself, I want to give you a little bit um, of uh, behind the scenes of what really happened in this whole process. So first we defined the goal. We wanted to create a modern and a better search experience than what we already have. 
you know that the, the forms that we used to have in the in the super search pages were very um, um, not so modern let's call it that way there are some newer search experiences in other websites that there is no reason for us not to use my heritage so we started with a, a very thorough analysis both quantitative and qualitative uh, we wanted to see what are the pain points in the search experience and we did it by using numbers and using our analysis tools and also by talking to people, to users, to MyHeritage members, um, to employees, to anyone that we can uh, get a sense of feeling what is better, what is worse, what we can improve. So examples of such uh, pain points, for example, how to edit an existing search. If you remember, it was not that easy to, to edit an existing search. We did add some improvements over the, over the years, and it was easier to add like simple um, fields, but if you wanted more complicated fields or complicated uh, or more advanced features, it wasn't that straightforward and wasn't that easy to do. And we did know from the data that the more focused the search is, I mean, the more details that are relevant for these individuals that you add for a search, the better chances that you guys will get results that are relevant for your search. So we wanted to think how we can improve this area. We also understood that people want to have the advanced capabilities in hand all time. We used to divide it into, to, into the basic form, into the advanced form. And we, there was a reason for this, because seeing all the advanced uh, options right up front, it's a bit overwhelming. And it's good to start with the basic search, but some experienced genealogists, when they come into search for a specific person, they do want to use those advanced, field, those advanced um, fields options. And we needed to find a way to have a balance between you, new users that have never started any search at MyHeritage and existing users that know better than me how to run a search at MyHeritage. Another thing that we understood is something that can be improved is an easier way to distinguish between tree records and historical records. Um, so we know that the, the existing search that we had up until a few months ago didn't have an easy way to distinguish between those two um, options. And uh, I can tell you just in a quick glance of the near future that what I'm going to show you is not even the end. We're going to do additional improvements in order to, to improve this area and other areas as well. We also understood that people want to know which collections were recently added. There is an easy way to do it, and I will show you at the relatively end of this uh, demo. But we wanted to have a much easier way. When you just like you go to Facebook and you see your feed and what's new, we just wanted you to have the same with my heritage. Get to the search engine and just see which collections were recently uploaded, were recently published at my heritage. Also, we got users' feedback. And by users' feedback, user considers every person either a very experienced genealogist or a person that is, this is the first search he did at MyHeritage or employees or product managers um, or people that are in support or in customer relations and are in touch with customers every single day. So we also check this area. And we also use our data analysis tool to check how much usage we have in each component, in each search field, in each advanced setting, which ones are more used, which ones are never used and can be removed. We didn't want to have like noise in those pages. We wanted them to be uh, clear, to be easy to understand and to not have many places that can just confuse users and not uh, explain to them the best way of what they can do for their search. And of course, we did a market research. By market research, we, searched, we researched both genealogy websites, but also other popular websites, such as Google Flights, such as Airbnb, 
and more websites. Come to think about it, those websites are not that much in use in the last few months, but we know for sure that they have, they have learned what are the best practices for their website and their search capabilities there as well. So why not learning from them? Why not using it and taking it to ourselves? So we started after this long, long, long um, exploration task. Uh, we started working and we wanted to get to the best experience. And it was not just one try. We did it in many, many cycles. We worked on a prototype. A prototype could be even a page not a search engine that is working, just a page that our designer worked on according to all of the conclusions that we got from our research and shows it to people and gets uh, inputs and gets comments, what they think is more obvious, what they think is very confusing, what they think should not appear there or should be more prominent than it already is. So we tested it with real users. And as I said, users can be people from my heritage. They can be my heritage friends. They can be um, people from uh, websites like user testing. They can just be um, other family members. We tested everyone that we could. And we collected as, math, as much feedback as we could just to try and be better at the prototype that we currently had. So we improved it. And then we tested it again. And then we tried to, to get some new inputs. We collected the feedback, we improved the prototype over and over again. And this has been a process that lasted for months. It's not something that we did and like next week we got conclusions. We got some inputs from this cycle and we improved it when we did it a little bit better. But then we saw that it's not perfect and we can improve it even more. And these were the cycles. And I know nothing is perfect. We cannot get to a perfect experience and we cannot get to an experience that works perfectly for all types of users, for heavy users that are using MyHeritage a lot and are very familiar with every little detail and at the same time, very comfortable for users that have never visited MyHeritage and it's their first visit. But we did try to improve as much as we can to get the best that we can get out of it. We tested it using a method called A-B test. A-B test, what it actually does, it is a method that compares two versions against each other and they want to see which one behaves better. Behaves better is something that is, that is defined by a given goal and we need to wait for a statistical improvement for this. So we have statistical tools that we use them and we look for an analysis that can determine which variation is better in the re uh, relevant goal that we gave it. What was the A and what was the B? The A was our super search pages, the ones that I showed you just a few slides ago, what happened back in, 20, in 2012. And the B, the other variant was the new search experience. Because we know that this page is very important and people use it a lot. This is not like a, a page that no one gets to it once in a few months, you go to it, I don't know, like just a setting page or something like that. This is a page that people use on a daily basis. We don't want to just do something that we think is good and then we tested it. And when we worked on improving it and adding more capabilities and stuff, but just not testing it and not making sure that it's best for our users. So we used this method and we released it bit by bit. We started with a beta user, with a beta testing uh, group. And as, as long as we saw that the performance is good, which means that people use this new experience more, that they are more engaged with it, that they get to relevant results, that they save more records, which probably means that they got records that they think are relevant for them. As long as we saw that this is the trend, we uh, felt more confident to release this uh, new experience for more and more users. And this is what we did. In the end, I can even tell you that right before we released it to everyone, we kept on doing fine tunes and last improvements, and we keep doing improvements up until today. So what is this new searching experience that I'm talking about? Don't worry, I know that this is small, but we are going to do a live demo soon, so I 
I'm sure that you will have most of your questions answered, so don't uh, try to read what's written here. It will be much larger soon. We used a much simpler search form. You can see the top part, the white part, so I will hover it with my mouse, this one. This is the search form. If you remember in the old pages, it caught almost all of the page. But this is the search form. It looks much more simple, but believe me, it has all the advanced features that we used to have in both forms. Nothing is missed. It's also easy to see which collections were recently updated because you can see that you have the search form and below it, you can see our categories under what type of records are you looking for. And right below it, you can see the recently added collections, which are the last collections that were added to my heritage at any given time. Editing a search is easier than ever. You will just see it in a few minutes and you won't believe how easy it is. And the filters, the filters that you can see, they change dynamically as the search progresses. What does it mean? It means that maybe you started a wide search. You added my name, Dana Drutman, and you added it and you clicked on search. And then you want to dive into a specific category, let's say military. When you dive into military, the filters that you will see in your search form will change in order to better guide you to which type of information is better for you to insert in order to get more relevant results. And if it's not clear, I will just show it in a few minutes, so don't even worry about it. Another thing that we talked about that was a pain point, we wanted to have a better distinct, we wanted to be able to distinguish between the family trees and historical records. And we know that it's uh, sometimes frustrating that you want, you're doing the same search and you want to see if there are new records or maybe you want to fine tune your search and you want to see only records that you haven't viewed yet. So we made a gentle, um, this, a gentle change between records that you already saw and records that you haven't seen yet. And you will see it right in a second. So let's dive a little bit further. So this is the, uh, the main page uh, of search historical records. You can get to it by clicking on research on the main tab or just going directly to it by typing myheritage.com slash research. Right below, you can see the collections that were recently added. And I'm sorry this screenshot was took um, uh, almost two months ago, but once we go live in a second, you will see that we added more collection. Actually, in the last month, we added many, many collections, uh, more than we usually add per month. So many exciting things are at my heritage. If I'm going to focus on the search box, so you can see all the fields that I have. And let's try to uh, tackle them one by one. So the first field is first name and middle name. And if I start typing on this field, what will happen is that I will have a, a checkbox right below. It says match name exactly. This is actually the advanced settings that you used to have on the old search form. It didn't disappear anywhere. It just helps you focus on what you need. When I start typing the first name, so the advanced options that are relevant for the first name, these are the ones that I currently see. And if I uncheck it, for example, I will be able to decide which filters I want to use for the, the first name match. And the same goes for last name. If I, I start typing a last name, I can see the filters um, as you will see uh, right in the, in the live demo. This is just the screenshots that I did for us to see it better. I can add a year of birth. I can just click on the calculator and calculate it if I don't remember exactly when this person was born. So you can say that he was at a certain age at a certain year and it will calculate in which year he was born. Um, if I start typing a year, I can decide if I want to have an exact surge of, or if I want to have a range of years. Let's say that I'm not sure that this John Smith was born in 1904. He might also be born at 1902 or 1905. So I can just expand the search and make it be like within plus minus five years, for example. I will get results that have a year of birth that are not 
only this specific here for it. And I can type a place, and the same goes here. Once I start typing, I can see the advanced features. Now I want to focus on the second row, on the add details. And you can see how much information you can have and add and see in this row. So the filters are, the add details are actually additional filters. You can click on each filter. Right now you can see that we have father, we have mother, spouse, death, and more. This is the general search. If I click on the filter, the relevant fields for this filter will open and I will be able to fill them just as I filled the, the name of John Smith. Once I start typing the first name, I will have the advanced options of the first name and the last name as well. Let's say that I typed and that his name was Arthur Smith and I clicked apply. What happens is that this information is added. You can see that it's marked now in orange, the father field, and you can see the name that I just added there. This is the information that I added regarding his father. You can do the same for any type of filter and you can also click on more. What will you see if you click on more? You will see additional filters that are not out front, like the father, mother, spouse, and death, but you can also use. And there are also advanced features that uh, you can use. I will just uh, zoom in on the search box. You can see that right below, we have those two options. Those two options existed on the exi in the old search form. The ability to show results from other languages and the ability in just one click, by one click, to match all terms exactly and not playing with each um, filter and film separately. So these options didn't disappear. They just changed their place. They appear here. Let's go back to, to Arthur Smith. If I don't want to use this filter, let's say I regret it or it was a mistake. If I just hover the father filter, you can see the X that I have just right to the name, to the Arthur Smith. If I click on it, it will just disappear and you will go back to what it used to be before. If I click on search, I can get to the search results. What can you see in this page? Very interesting. The first thing that you can see is the search box. It didn't disappear. The exact same search that you had in the main page remained right in this page and it will not go anywhere. And editing such a search or enriching it with additional information is very easy, just like we did in the main search form, clicking on a filter, uh, deleting a field that I used to add. Everything is super easy and super intuitive that you can do. Another area in this uh, search results is the ability to narrow down by category. It means that I don't want to see all types of records that we have for John Smith. I just want to dive into a specific set of uh, category or collection, whatever I decide. So let's say that I click on immigration and travel. What happens is that you can see that the amount of results that came from this search is lower than what I used to have. I used to have uh, more than 100 million search results, but by clicking on the immigration and travel, I have only 1 million now. And it shows to me records only from this uh, category. Of course, then I can drill further down uh, to a subcategory or even to a specific collection, and I can search within a specific collection as well. Another thing that you can see here is the advanced, uh, the add details, the additional filters that we have. If you remember, the default filters were father, mother, spouse, and death. And now it's changed. This is exactly what I told you before. If I narrowed the search down by immigration and travel, what we will do, we will present to you the filters that are more relevant for this specific search. It means it's, it gives you a hint that if you have information about immigration or residence or further information about the birth, not only the year, but the full date or the place, it might help you refine the search. And don't worry, the other filters didn't go anywhere. If you just click on more, you will see here all the rest of the filters.
So nothing disappeared, it only changed and it only tries to help you be more focused on your search. If I drill down for further um, a subcategory or collections, those filters might change once again. Don't worry, we will never remove a filter that you added, even if it doesn't exist in this specific uh, search. For example, if you add immigration, and then you scroll back to all collections and go to a different category, we will not just delete it. The search will not take this field into account when it retrieves search results, but we will not just delete it for you. So if you go back to immigration later, you will still be able to use the field. You will not have to edit it or to add it one second. Uh, everything that I showed you now, I will just do a live demo in a few minutes. So it will be even more clear and you can see me doing it live, not only using screenshots. But what I wanted to tell you is that this is not the end. This is just the beginning. We never stop improving. We never stop improving. This process that I just talked to you about took a lot of months. We invested it a lot of time, a lot of resources, a lot of great minds. But we know that this is just the beginning. We have a list of many, many, many features that we want to add for this, that we want to improve it, that we want to make it better. For example, this experience was developed currently only for the desktop, which means only if you search within your computer, you will be able to see the new experience. But if you go with your tablet or with your mobile phone, you will still see the older experience. We are working now on making this experience better also on mobile devices. You know that we want to improve also the existing experience by, for example, we want not only to show you the difference between the uh, family trees and the records. I will show you uh, this right in a second. We want you guys to be able to exclude family trees from the search results. We know the family trees is something tricky because on one hand, it might have content that is more unique than other records. Um, that people added it to the tree and maybe they were the only people that knew about it. But on the other hand, it might be in a less uh, confidence than a historical record because it's, this is based on people and people make mistakes and people you sometimes don't know the exact uh, information. So we want to give you the ability to either see family trees as a part of the search results or just to be able to exclude them. We also want you to have the ability to review results from a specific collections. Let's say you want to see results only from collections that are relevant to uh, Minnesota. I'm not talking about searching for records from Minnesota. I'm talking about specific collections. What is the difference? Let's say that we have um, a, a collection of births in Minnesota throughout a certain range of years. So this is a collection that is relevant to Minnesota, but there might be a different collection. I don't know, uh, a, a military collection of all the US uh, army or some kind of other collection. Or let's say I'm talking about California and there's a passenger list of people that arrived to California. But maybe if you search for, I don't know, Minnesota, you can see some results that exist in other collections that are not Collect, connected to Minnesota. Let's say this general collection of US Army, for example. So it's not collected to, connected to Minnesota, but you can still find their information about soldiers that were born in Minnesota, for example. So this is another way, another type of filters that we would like to add to our search engine. And we want to add many, many more. We want to have the tabular view um, that you currently don't have. Um, we want to have many, many more. We have to, we want to have the ability to search with the wild cards um, and additional things that I won't tell you now because you have to stay tuned and to see what we, we want to do. Another option that we would like to add is the ability to share interesting records. I guess that many of you got to a record and they said, oh my God, that's an amazing information about my grandmother. Wow, I really want to share it with the rest of my family members, not just to save it to my tree, because maybe some people are not members of my heritage and I do want to share it with them. So we want to give you guys the ability 
to take a record that you find interesting and to have the ability to share it through WhatsApp, through Facebook, through Twitter. So this is also an option, a, a capability that we will be working on in the next few months. And of course, everything that I just told you about the new Surge experience touched the experience itself. It didn't do any change in the logic of the results that you got. We know that there are some challenges in the current logic of the search results, and we know that you guys sometimes have questions about the, why I did a specific query and got specific results. We know that this is an area that we can improve. This is not a part of this um, new experience, but we will try and better improve ourselves every time we do it in small steps and we will try to improve more and more and more and more and to give you more relevant results. I can tell you for sure that only by using the search, this new search experience, even before any other improvements in our search engine logics, you will find the results you're looking for much easier because it's easier to enrich the, the search query and to add more relevant details to it. Um, now, what I would like to do, I would like to have a live demo because I think that screenshots is not enough in this case. Um, so this is the new historical search engine, the search experience. As I said, you can get to it either from MyHeritage by clicking on research, and you can also just type directly myheritage.com slash research. Let's start a search. Let's do a general search. I don't know, like Mary um, Thompson. As you can see, every field that I'm start typing, I can see the advanced features, the advanced settings right away. I don't see other advanced uh, features for other uh, fields because they are not relevant for the specific place that I'm in at the moment. Let's say that I want to add the year of birth as well, 1930. Let's say that you lived in San Diego. Of course, you can start a search only using some of those um, fields and some of the fields at the bottom. You don't have to necessarily use all four fields because maybe you don't know where Mary was born. That's totally fine. Now I click on search. I get the search results. So this is the results page. You can see that I have this search box at the top. I have the additional filters that I can add. And even if I scroll down and start looking at the results, you can see that this search box always stays with me. You can see I'm scrolling down and it stays. So it is very easy to just edit the search. For example, if I want to add a father, Let's say that her father was John. Sorry. I can click on apply. And the results will change right away. Um, of course, if I even scroll down and do it further down, that's totally fine. Another thing that you can see is that we have different icons for family trees, records for family trees, not only my heritage family trees, also family search family trees and genie family trees and other collections of family trees. And if I scroll down, you can see that we have other collections that have a record icon. And this is a nice way to distinguish between family trees and the historical records. And as I said, we want to keep improving it and to even give you the ability to actually exclude the family trees if you wish from the search query. If I get to a specific uh, record that is interesting, let's say I want to go for Mary Thompson, I can click on it and it will open in a new tab. This is also something new. And we did it on purpose. We did it on purpose because you, we want to give you the ability to always go back to the search results that you got. If I take a look at Mary Thompson, and for some reason, accidentally, I clicked on the X. I want you guys to be able to still go back to the rest of the search results that you had and continue the research and not say, oh my God, I closed it. Now I need to start it all over. No, it will not happen anymore. By the way, this is not relevant for this topic, but this is a nice input. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but um, 
as Jeff said in the beginning, we have one of the nicest features that we released in the last year is the My Heritage in Color, where people can colorize their own photos. We did this thing also in the US yearbooks collection when we took the records and we added a colorized version as well. Of course, the original black and white image is always here and you don't have to worry, we never touched the original, but we did add an option to see it in color. And I guess that we, most of us at least can agree that it's crazy. There is such a wow feeling when you see it in color, which is pretty awesome. But that's out of topic. When I go back to the third result, I don't know if you can see it, but the title color changed a little bit. Now it's dark gray and not black like it used to be here. And that's just a gentle way for us to, to let you distinguish between records you saw and records you haven't seen yet. Okay, so let's now focus on a category. Um, I will clear this filter just for the example. And you remember now we had the father, mother, spouse, and death. Let's go to mm, military, for example. And now the filter has changed. We have the birth, and if I click on it, I can always edit it. I can add more information about the exact birth, about the place. I can clear the information that I just added. And I have relevant fields for this specific search, military and residence. And under more, I will have additional filters that I can always use. They don't go anywhere. They stay here all the time. I can keep on um, drilling down. The filters might change as well. In this case, they didn't, but believe in some cases, they will continue changing just to help you focus on what information might be relevant for the existing search that you're doing. Let's go back to our collection. So as you can see, you can continue and scroll down and see more information. It's very nice. And of course, at the bottom, you can either change the amount of results per page if you want to see less results per page or more results per page. And you can also go and see the results on the next page or on the last page. Of course, that this type of wild search of Mary Thompson from San Diego will bring us back many, many results. But the more information you add, the more chances that you get a more focused result. And one tip that I can give you is that even if you add all the information that you know, you might not get any results, although they are relevant results, because sometimes the records that we have don't hold all the information that you know about this person. So if for some reason you add all the details that you know and you do not get results, try taking out one detail at a time, one filter at a time, and then maybe you will get to some interesting results that you couldn't get otherwise. I want to show you another nice thing. Actually, this is something that happened over our family dinner a few weeks ago. We did a search in Hebrew of my father. His name is Moshe Drutman. And then I clicked on search. What happened is a very nice thing that I guess some of you are familiar with, the translations options at my heritage. So it takes this Moshe Drutman and it searches for records in other languages that have this name, but in their own language. And we found something very interesting. You can see this record, Moshe Drutman, but the actual name was Moshe Drutman on this uh, record. And on the bracket is the name that I added. So it can show me what it translated it into. And I saw that I can get a record on my father from the from inventors of historical patents which is, it was very weird. And it started a very nice conversation during our family dinner time. And then I just found out that back in 1991, my father had an idea of a sticker that he can put on a car and to try and help drivers to keep distance between cars. This is way before we had autonomic vehicles and Mobileye and other uh, solutions like this. So it was very nice. And we just started a very interesting uh, conversation from just a very, very naive search to my heritage. I didn't expect to find anything other than family trees, to be honest. So as I said, this is the, the new search experience. I didn't show you here 
that we have other places that um, other things in this uh, main page you can see the types of records that the collection type that sorry the categories that we have at my heritage you can scroll and see the rest of them and you can dive into and start a search on a specific uh, category of course we did it in phases and in steps so if you start uh, a search in a category you might see the the old search form, but don't worry, we will change it into the new search in just a few months. And you can also see the collections that were recently added. So you can see that we added the collection just today and we added three more collections in the last few days, uh, just yesterday. And I wanted to introduce to you with another way uh, to see results. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it or not, but if you're not, it's gold to, to know that it exists. It's called the collection catalog. You can get to it from two places. You can get to it either from research and collection catalog, and you can also get to it from here, from view all. So let's click on it and see what we get. The collection catalog is actually a tool that holds all of the collection that MyHeritage has. It's a very easy way to browse throughout this tool to see which collections we have, which collections we don't have, don't have, you cannot see here, but, uh, from which countries, from which years, from which categories. It's very comfortable. And by the way, if you were using the map component on the old pages that we just removed, this is a very um, a comfortable uh, way to see the information that you can see if you clicked on a certain country. So what can you do here? First of all, you can search for a specific collection. If I just type here a keyword, let's say uh, birth, I know that there are many and collections with birth, but let's just give it a try. I click on enter. I can see all of the collections with birth. I can see that we have 285 such collections and I can see their list. Anytime I can clear the specific search and start all over. And any search I can sort by different things. I can sort by the number of records to see which collections are the biggest. I can sort by last updated. And below the featured collections, I can see the ones that were recently updated to my heritage. They say Canada, Nova Scotia, and uh, the, the Nova Scotia Death Index, and from Australia, and from Arkansas, and so on and so on. And it's ordered by the, the last update date. It can either be the day that we published the collection or when we updated an existing collection. We just updated two collections in the last few weeks. So it will also be shown here. Also collections that have images. We also have a, a label here, that, like here, that you can see that it has images as well. Another cool thing that you can do here, you can either dive to a specific category, but you can also refine by location. Let's say that I live in Germany and I want to see which collections my heritage has that are linked to Germany. So I will click on Europe. I will see the collections from Europe. I will refine further and I will click on, let's say Germany. And I can see that I have 60 different collections with almost 170 million records that are linked to Germany. I can see them here. I can uh, change the order to see which collections are the biggest. Um, so it will be uh, more helpful for me to know what type of information we have at MyHeritage. There are other filters that you can use here as well. You can further filter by specific uh, category or subcategory. You can see that the total is 60. And you can see how many collections we have in each category. You can also refine by a specific range of years. So if you say that you want, for example, to search for a birth record of your grandmother, that you know the year range of when she was born, you can either, either refine your search by using this tool. So this is a very uh, comfortable way of seeing which collections we have. And of course, each collection that you want, uh, you can click on it and you will get right to the collection search page. You will be able to see the, a description about the collection. You will be able to search by this collection and any a search that you will start, let's say that I will search, I will do a wild search and I will just write mark if I click on search, I will get to the new search experience. I will see the results here from the specific collection that I just chose. I will be able to add more information, either to add more filters 
I will also be able to drill up back to all birth records or to birth rage and death and to all collections and so on and so on. I will just continue the search experience right from here. Um, I think this is basically everything that I wanted to cover with you regarding this uh, live demo. Um, I know that you can dive here for hours and search for records, and that's usually what I do, <laughs> so it's nice. Um, and this is basically it. Well, good. I'm ready for... Yeah. <laughs> good. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, David says... Uh, that he actually can't wait for the webinar to be over so he can go dive in to, to the records. <clears throat> and, uh, <laughs> I'm was, so happy to hear. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so fun to have the behind the scenes. It, you know, that's that's a that's a picture that most of us don't get. We we just get to a search page and 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 go. But understanding, you know, the the background of of what you've put into it. Uh, it, it really adds to our experience. And thanks for the live demo also. That's always uh, very helpful. Well, let me switch over okay. here. Let's do a couple of door prizes. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Uh, just one last thing. I really wanted to thank you all for listening, and I really encourage you to send us your feedback. Good. Um, you can uh, send it uh, to our customer service. You have emails on the website. You can get my private email if you want to. We're more than happy to hear feedback about what's working for you, what you really like, which improvements you think you can add. We're really eager to get information from our users and to try and make the experience even better. So I encourage you all to, to stay in touch. Yeah, that's one thing, Dana, I've seen over the years that has uh, my heritage has begun to excel at is, is listening to user feedback. And that's that's something that's really valuable to all of us so yeah keep keep that uh going uh, we appreciate you well uh we're going to see see all of you next time uh, for a new webinar presenter ann young will be speaking about finding new cousins and building your family tree with dna and she's an actual user and and uh, it will be here to uh, just talk to us about uh, how she has used dna at my heritage so uh, register for all of these uh, online up at FamilyTreeWebinars.com. Okay, it's uh, it's door prize time. And if you're here, you're automatically eligible to win. Uh, for our first door prize, I'm going to have a one-year MyHeritage complete plan. And, uh, you know, with uh, MyHeritage in, the, in color and the photo enhancer, uh, that is included. I don't have that here in my checklist yet because it is so new, but... Uh, you'll get unlimited access to those tools with the complete plan. You'll also get unlimited access to all of the data uh, subscription that uh, that Dan has been talking to us about here today. So uh, let's go and find our winner here, Kimberly Kinnear. Kimberly, congratulations. Hope that was Exciting to hear your name on the air. Whether I pronounced it right or not, I gave it my best try. So just watch for an email from us uh, soon. And then then we I keep forgetting to change this slide. <laughs> this slide is supposed to be my slide for the DNA kit. Well, uh, Lisa Louise Cook was our presenter a, a few weeks back. And, so, uh, and she was very good, too. And you can go and uh, view her webinar in the library. But we're going to do a... <clears throat> A DNA kit. By the way, Kimberly, Kimberly uh, says, yes, I did pronounce her name correct. Well, good. Thanks, Kimberly. Okay, let's go and find <clears throat> Deborah Hirsch. Deborah, you've got a DNA kit coming your way, so congratulations. Okay, let's, uh, let's bring Dan... Uh, it's Dana in Israel. In my mouth, it's Dana. <laughs> so, so <laughs> Both we'll, are fine. yeah, we'll do that. You know, I was I was given the name of Jeff, but it was spelled with a G, and so I've I've had to respond to all kinds of things my entire life. So, thanks for putting up with me here. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, David, good luck. I hope you <laughs> dive in and have fun. Let's go to Jay's question, and and uh, and Dana, if there's any time that you want me to switch over to your screen to do live demo uh, just just ask and, and I'm happy to do that uh, Jay is wondering 
about the old newspapers. Now, I, I noticed in uh, in some of some of your screens, I saw that as a category. Uh, what's the best uh, way for her to find out which uh, newspapers are available at My Heritage? Is that possible? Yes. Yeah, so actually, it's very very easy using this uh, collection catalog that I just uh, showed. Um, I can show it once again if you like. Sure. Um, Here, I'll switch this over to you, and you should have the button there on your screen now. Okay, good. Okay, so if we go to the collection catalog, so there are actually two types of ways. So first of all, you can go here, and you can just click on newspapers, and you will see all the newspaper collections that MyHeritage has. So this is one way that you can just browse those collections and choose which collection you want to start a search from. And another way, if I go back to the, to the main page, so I can just uh, see the categories that we have at MyHeritage, for example, newspapers. And I can just click on it, and I will get to the search form of the newspapers. I will be able to see the collections on the right, and I will also be able to start a search just uh, relevant for newspapers. And then just below um, that, where it says publication place, could I type in the name of a, a state or a country there, and would that narrow it down to, to see yes, all? Yes, of course. Okay. Of course. Okay. And another option, you can always just go to research and start a wild search. Um, like, let's say John Smith is just the easiest, but it's a very, very wild. Yeah. And you can always just dive in to the newspapers by narrowing down by category. So there are two types of ways. Either you want to search only for newspapers or you want to browse and see which newspapers collections we have and that you can easily do using the collection catalog. Good. Okay. Thanks so much. And uh, thanks, Jay, for your question. Uh, Roberta is wondering uh, about the cost for the data subscription. Is is there a, a way to a place to go to learn about that? So actually, the cost uh, is something that changes between countries, but um, there is a, okay. um, actually, I don't remember the exact link. I will try. I think it's my heritage. Um, wait. Yeah, I always have to Google it. Uh, and, yeah, and then, then <laughs> I'm I, sorry. Then I just I don't remember, it. but it's something like pricing or something like that. Um, I will do one test and then another one. Oh, it's in Hebrew. Wait a second. But there is a page. I just don't remember it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm I'm searching online here too. Prices? No. We hiring price list here. Uh -huh. You can see. You can scroll to the bottom. Okay. And you can see the price list. Okay. And if you click on it, you can see the different uh, subscriptions uh, that we have and their prices. This is the price in Israeli shekels, but every country has its own price in her own uh, currency. Okay. Good. Uh, and good. it's called myheritage.com slash pricing. <laughs> I just didn't remember. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Slash pricing. So there's your direct answer, uh, Roberta. Thanks for the question. And, uh, yeah, you're doing a great job here, uh, Dana. Um, Sherry asks, she has a question about the match exactly. And she says, and that that's the the advanced option that comes up, I think, when you start typing in a name. She says, if if she puts in a middle name, but the record itself doesn't contain the middle name, will that record show up in the list of results? So if you click on the match exactly and you add first and middle name, the chances that you will get a record that has only one of those names is very low. Yeah. So I would either recommend for you to uncheck the exact match and to run this search or try three types of search, only first name, only middle name, and first plus middle name. Okay. All right. Thank you. Let's go to Alva, who asks, is there a way to um, eliminate the results from your own tree when you perform searches? Um, in general, you mean in general from the search results so that people will not see uh, results from your own tree? I That's think, the question. I think she's when she's doing a search, she's just she's mm -hmm. wanting to not come up with results that are in her own tree. So actually, currently there is no such an option, but that's a very good suggestion. Ah, okay. Um, so thanks for bringing it up, and I'm just writing it down. 
See, that's another reason we love these webinars with you. With you, uh, uh, and they're always ready with a, a pad of paper and a pen, and and uh, and this is how my heritage gets improved. Okay. Oh, Susan says kudos to my heritage. They are always in the forefront. I totally believe that. Um, let's see other questions. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah, Maureen, we did we did do the door prizes. Lisa's wondering, so if, if we're looking at a newspaper, she says, is it possible to clip and save a small article out of the page in the newspaper? Um, that, what you can actually do, you can download the whole page. So let's say that you got into a record from a newspaper and you got to a page and uh, you, you saw the relevant information. If you click on the full screen, I can show it to you. Do you still see my screen, Jack? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. So let's say I'm going to um, the Australian newspapers just to show you for this example. And I'm going to write down Dana. Let's see which results I have here. So let's say that this is the relevant uh, records for me, and it's very interesting, and I really like it. So two things. First of all, you can see this is very small, but I, I, sh I guarantee you that you will be able to see where Dana is written here, which will be highlighted in purple. You just have to zoom in a little bit. But you can also click on the full page. This is the icon. And you can always just download the image. And then you save it in your own um, computer. And then if you want to take only a part of it and to save only a part of it and use it wherever you want, you can just totally do it. Okay, I, I did that just yesterday myself, and it works just fine. It's it's uh, very good. Okay, thank you. Let's uh, let's see. Paul is wondering: Is it possible to is there, is there a trial membership that's available, like a a two week trial uh, for my heritage, or or how can we try it out? Of course, there is a free trial period. You can just you just need to sign. Uh, to write myheritage.com slash, slash research and start your own search. You will see results, but uh, for some results, you will have to, to get a subscription in order to click and see the full record. And once you, you do that, you actually have a chance to get two weeks for free. To try it and you can cancel it anytime. And if you like it, you just don't cancel it and you start a subscription two weeks afterwards. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Uh, Therese is wondering about the other languages. Um, she just wondered what happens when you click the other languages uh, option. And I don't see it here on this screen, but maybe back on the on the home. Yeah, like right. This one? Oh, yeah. Show results from other languages. What is, uh, what's that little information icon at the end represent? What is that? What is that? Okay, here we go. So this actually explains what this capability is. It's called global name translation that we use. Yeah. And it's just like the second example that I showed you. If you remember, I just typed the name of my father in Hebrew. And my heritage has this technology of taking the name in Hebrew and searching for it in other, um, in other languages. And it will not only search for Moshe, it will also search for Moses because that's how Moshe is pronounced in English, for example. So we have the technology to search in other languages. For example, there might be a, we recently released a collection in Greek and uh, the information there was in Greek and some records, some of the fields we did translate ourselves into English and some of them not. So you can just start and type a name in Greek, for example, and we will be able to search within the whole database of my heritage, this 12.5 billion historical records database and see this name in other languages as well. Yeah, that's that's incredible. My so if I know the Danish name uh or the English name of my Danish ancestors, then perhaps it would also uh search for the Danish names when I'm searching for the English names. So, yeah, I I love it. Uh good job. Um <laughs> Leslie's wondering about uh your filters. Uh is it possible so I don't see it well those filters change based on, yeah, they're dy they change dynamically, like you were saying. But uh, is it possible to, can you add a child as one of the the filters 
So you're searching yes, of course. by child? Of course, of course. If I drill back up. Okay, so you click on more and then you click on child. And yeah, is it is it possible, Dana, to add more than one child there? Hey Dana, I'm. I'm oh, there you go. I I just. Do you lost hear me your, now? I lost you for a second. Yeah, you're back. Um, yeah. Okay. Great. So I don't know where you lost me, um, <laughs> uh, just, but if you click on more okay. <laughs> under the add relatives, you can see the child. If I can add, if I click on it, I will just add the details, and it will be added as another filter. Yeah. Good. Okay. So she's also wondering: Is it possible? Can you add a second child there by chance? And, um, I so, technically I think you can. No, I'm sorry. We limited it because there were some issues with it. There, there okay. are records that you might have more than one child. You can see, let's say, a census or a, other records that we have a few children. Okay. But for the better of the search, it will be good to to search one name by the other. I mean, not all of them together, because there are some. There are lower chances that you will find something because if only one of the children was mentioned in some of the records and you wrote both names of the children, you may not get to records that might be relevant for you. So we limited it into only one. Okay. And if this is something that is very disturbing and many of you guys will complain, not complain, but will not like it. So it will be very interesting to know. And we will find a way to, to overcome it. Hmm. That's not an issue. Okay. Just think that it's more confusing than having a benefit of it. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question about names. Janet is asking if a person has two last names, such as in Latin American names. Do you mm -hmm. know? Do you know how to ha how those are handled? Do, are are the two last names in the in the last name field, or does one go in the first name field? Uh, are you, I know Daniel uh, Horowitz would probably really understand that. Uh, uh, do you know what? How do you handle um, multiple last names? So that's actually a great question. And now we'll, I'm going to give you another behind the scene uh, oh, good. Um, exclusion answer. Um, so exclusive answer, I'm sorry. Yeah. So actually, before we publish any collection, we get the data. Some of the data is already ordered by first name and last name. So it's very easy to know uh, which uh, names are a part of the first name and which ones are a part of the last name. And for some of them, it's more complicated. So we have a, a group of very experienced people that are doing this separation. And uh, they most of the time do it very, very well. So if you have two last names, you should be able to search for, let's say, both of those last names. Let's say, actually, my last name is not only Drutman, it's Drutman Shimanovsky. Yeah, it's very long, I know, because it's my husband's name. So I can edit here as Drutman Shimanovsky. But I will get records that will have both Drutman and Shimanovsky if I did the exact uh, match. So what I would recommend is, yes, basically you can get results with two last names. That's totally, uh, 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 it, it's happening. It's, it's very common and it's happening. But if you don't get the results that you're looking for, I would just recommend just try to use one name at a time and get results. But the shortest answer is yes, you can use two last names in the last name field. Wonderful. Well, uh, Dana, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch over here to answer a, uh, a question. Um, just a second. <laughs> my hair, I, I'm, for those of you who have questions about using MyHeritage that are uh, maybe a little, that are beyond the scope of our webinar here today, I'm going to show you where to go and uh, ask those. So you should be able to see my screen about now. So I'm going to put this link in your chat area. Okay, it's there now. So this is the MyHeritage user group up over on Facebook. And so this is where you'll go and uh, type in your question. And there's more than 13,000 other members there. And this is a private group. And uh, this is where you can go and, and just and ask uh, questions about uh, using MyHeritage. Um, and look at this, you get all kinds of great answers. So uh, check that out. Uh, you, you, you just join the group. It's free, of course. Um, 
Uh, Dana, before we say goodbye, any final thoughts? I just want to say that I had a great time. I was very excited of uh, doing this webinar, and I'm so happy. Um, I'm really happy that you invited me to, to do this, and um, thank you all for listening. Oh, and thank you. It's, I mean, really, it's uh, very enjoyable to have uh, the actual uh, uh, product and project managers from my heritage to be directly with us uh, to answer questions, to give us the behind the scenes. So I uh, sure appreciate you and everyone at my heritage, and sure appreciate all of you wherever and whenever you are around the world. Thanks, everyone, for sharing part of your day with us. And remember, life is short. Do genealogy first. Bye, everyone. Bye, Dana. Thanks so much. Bye.